Do you want to start a small business? And is it a woodworking business? If so, let's talk about it. I'm gonna give you some real life experiences and tips that I found along the way of, of starting my small business. Let's talk about it. Hi, it's Dave from Finale's Customs. I'm gonna talk about uh, my real life experiences and uh, realities of starting a small business, especially a woodworking business. Um, it's, I think it's a good gateway business to start, um, and there's some things you need to know going into it. Um, I'm going to go through a couple steps and a couple realities that I ran into while running my small business, which wasn't supposed to be a business, it was supposed to be just a hobby, and that's how I think it works for most woodworkers or anybody in the trades at that point, uh, at that matter. So let's talk about some of the things that you will have to realize and, and deal with and understand to be su somewhat successful and, and not uh, lose money, and also to not uh, lose interest. Let's talk about step one. So step one to me is having a plan. Uh, the plan for me is kind of having an idea of what you want to build. And I'm, I'm going to talk woodworking because that's my experience and that's the kind of business that I have today. So um, my plan was uh, tables, rustic farmhouse furniture. That's a, it was a big seller and it still is. Uh, and it's low hanging fruit, we'll call it. Um, it's it's a somewhat not too complex to build. You can build with the minimal tools and um, but still can make good quality and make it look as nice as possible with that rustic and distressed look. Uh, some people seem to like, but also um, you gotta have a plan whether you're gonna be doing some type of furniture like that or if you're gonna be doing uh, cutting boards or crafts, things like that, because that, that changes the, the, uh, your dynamics of your business uh, with shipping and installing and how you sell um, and also some of the tools that you'll definitely need. So let's talk about um, Woodwork and uh, furniture building, and that's kind of what I do. And I do, I do crafts. It's not my thing, but I do uh, build cutting boards and flags and noodle boards, stovetop covers, coasters, and other uh, things like that. Signs, but mainly they're gifts or like they're cut off uh, wood left over from other projects that I will give to uh, to the to the client as as a gift usually. And, it, and it's uh, called perceived value. And I think a lot of people like it. It's a nice touch. It's also um, you know, it also generates more business. And there's a couple of things that I want to get into with that. So let's talk about um, that, have a plan. So you need to know what, what kind of woodworking you want to do. Uh, do you want to be cutting words only, crafts, or do you want to be furniture? If you're going to be cutting words only, that kind of changes the dynamics with like your shipping. Because now cutting boards is, is good because um, you can ship anywhere for the most part, um, if you have that capability. Or it's easier to even deliver, you know, to drop off. It's, you know, there's no, you don't need a truck or a trailer, you know, or a big van or SUV. Um, you could have a smaller car and do that. So that, that changes that. Also, you can sell more on Etsy, where furniture is a lot harder to do. Um, and we're going to get into uh, where you want to sell, uh, or, I, or at least where I sell uh, my furniture. Or if you're going to do furniture now, you, you need to realize um, you need to have a way to install this furniture, get it to your client, um, more space to build. But also, you can also work with uh, less uh, quality wood. You can work with more pine and poplar if you're doing furniture, since you're going to be painting, which we'll get into that later. So let's talk about like the furniture. So if you're going to do furniture, uh, step two, uh, you really need to realize is you're going to be an installer, a mover, an accountant, and um, somewhat a construction person, because you kind of have to have an idea of what you're doing inside people's homes or residential and commercial. So for example, um, I'm doing, um, I've done built-ins. So you kind of have to know where your, your studs are in the house, or 16 on center, et cetera. So you kind of have the general uh, general knowledge of carpentry and construction. So if you don't have that, you're gonna learn it. So you don't have a choice. Um, if you're gonna be installing dining room tables, well, mostly you gotta put them together on site, or you, unless you have good instructions. Um, but then you, if you don't wanna get called in the middle of the night, you know, every day, hey, I'm trying to install this tabletop and we don't know how to do it, et cetera or stolen legs, you know, it's more aggravation sometimes than to deliver. So for my business, I'm in the mid-Atlantic region of the United States, and I do sell from North Carolina to New York, but mainly I'm in Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey area. Um, but I do uh, make uh, runs up and down the coast to uh, drop furniture off if need be. Um, so I have a truck that helps. I've always had a truck, and that definitely helps, but it's not perfect. So. Also, when you're going to be doing installs and deliveries, because you are going to become a mover, you need to be able to pack your furniture, pack your products, you know, whether it be bubble wrap, moving blankets, 
uh, straps, you know, tie downs. You need to have, have that, that as part of your plane. If you don't, you're going to really regret it. Um, cause I've made mistakes where, you know, I finished these beautiful tables, in my opinion, beautiful tables, and I was shipping them out, you know, moving them in my truck and I end up, you know, scratching them up on the, on delivery cause I didn't strap them down correctly. So you got to take that in mind too. And, um, and realize that's that's a real life reality. Also, for that you got to be able to install, and you know be able to secure your income, uh, the money from your client. And, and that's we'll talk about finances a little later. I'm not going to go too deep into that because that's different every state, every area, and also you know how what you believe in, and um, and I don't like to get into money too much. So let's talk about the next steps. Okay, so let's talk about step three. In my opinion, uh, let's start with the bare minimal tools you're gonna need to start your woodworking business, if that's what you choose to do. And for me, um, I started my business with just uh, an old circular saw I had um, for like 30 years almost now. It's an old Craftsman cord saw and also I have a DeWalt one somewhere. Uh, an old drill, um, this DeWalt drill I've had for almost 30 years, if, if not 30 years. Um, still works i usually keep it plugged in over here with my uh, my pocket hole uh, uh station or you get here like a regular pool saw japanese saw or like a regular uh, wood saw um it's a little harder and honestly you could get a cheap circular saw with a battery sometimes uh for like 50 bucks to you know 50 to 100 bucks and that comes with the battery uh, i would recommend getting some kind of saw to cut your wood uh, you need something to cut something up obviously you don't have a table saw yet because you're new if you have a table saw even better even if it's a cheaper one it definitely helps to cut up your 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 wood especially when you're starting out you're probably gonna be using a lot of framing lumber uh, or softwoods you know because that's what you're going to be have access to and that's going to be your skill level at that point also you may not know where sawmills are yet because you're still new so we'll talk about that next so also I would recommend maybe get like a little jigsaw um, I have a couple jigsaws I usually keep um, some in a box what I was talking about earlier with, with moving and installing you need to have a uh, pack out tools um, you know toolboxes for tools for installs I keep tools uh, separate I like these rigid boxes um, or whatever um, for installs so the next thing I think you definitely need you need measuring devices you need tape measures or you know measuring rollers um, and maybe like these uh, speed rollers I think these are awesome these combo rollers these are these are pretty good because they also give you square um, I also have machine um, squares and also like these cheap squares you get Home Depot for like you know 10 20 bucks uh, they come in packs um, these are also awesome to have. And obviously, you need pencils, um, you know, other marker devices, markers. You definitely need that to start. Um, and now you need to figure out, depending on what you're going to do, if you're going to do cutting boards, um, I would recommend um, buying your lumber um, already milled up because you don't have a table saw yet, you know, or a joiner or a planer and things like that. So, circular saw you can use, um, but it's going to be a lot harder. So, Let's keep that in mind. So if you're doing furniture, which is probably going to be more, more realistic, you're probably going to be doing little end tables, coffee tables, benches, which I think is low-hanging fruit, like I mentioned, and they're great uh, to sell. You can put them on your Facebook marketplace uh, or wherever, and, or put them on your Facebook, and people will, will comment. That's how my business started. My wife put some pictures of furniture I built on her Facebook, and people were starting inquiring about it, and that's how it kind of got the ball rolling, I don't know, about eight, nine years ago, whatever. Um, so that got me going. It was just a hobby. It was something I was just doing, trying to save money. And ended up growing to a, a small business that I wasn't planning on, uh, and I'm still not prepared. I'm not in a great shop, so you, we'll talk about that also. So the next thing I think you need, you need some way to, uh, you know, obviously you need glue and, and screws, you know, screwdrivers. Uh, but I think the next thing you really need, like I said, the drill is great, um, and um, clamps. You need clamps, whether these F-style clamps, these little uh, squeeze clamps, or even pipe clamps. You get pretty cheap. Um, I have probably hundreds of clamps in the shop also you get these parallel cl cl clamps here which aren't too bad they're pretty expensive but you could get these uh, sometimes you can get them used and I would recommend that honestly uh, get the clamps you can and um, start, start with that so I think they're the, they're the bare minimum so now you're probably gonna be using butt joints to start out with so if that's the case then that's fine it's not ideal uh, the next thing I would recommend getting is some kind of like uh, joinery tool, whether it be the right of pat passage tool like this, a uh, jig, this Craig jig. Uh, you get these for like 40 bucks at Home Depot, Lowe's or whatever, or even on Amazon. It comes usually with a drill bit, uh, some impact drivers, even some sample screws, uh, whether it be one and a half, one and a quarter, and two inch, I believe. Uh, and they use it for soft woods, but that's fine. You can uh, use that, and now you can start uh, joining your your tables. And this is how I built my first sets of furniture with butt joints and. Uh, this 
a uh, cheap pocket hole jig with a little clamp. Um, and you don't have to buy the clamp, the correct clamp. You can use regular F style clamp or whatever uh, if you have them. So you could get in your business for probably 100 to 200 dollars to start. Uh, honestly, cheaper if you have some stuff because a lot of things you realize you already have. For example, if you have um, this Craftsman circular saw, or yeah, circular saw with the battery, well, this battery may already work with your weed whacker. You may have a Craftsman weed whacker or a Ryobi or the Walt Milwaukee. Whatever. So if you already have outdoor tools, sometimes they come with batteries, and these batteries are interchangeable with your tools. Um, so keep that in mind. So you want to cut something to cut, something to drill, something to clamp, obviously something to measure with, something to keep things square as possible, um, something to join with. So I think they're the first things you really want to start with. Um, now, obviously you're going to sand too, so you get like sand, sheets of sandpaper or like a piece of wood. Like a wood block or something like this, you could use um, to sand your uh, your project. So you don't have a sander yet, per se. So if you do have a sander, even better. So like I have uh, multiple sanders here. I use these. I have, I have a couple of these DeWalt ones. You get these for under 100 bucks, um, but that will come in time. So that's and obviously I have. It goes back to the cordless thing. If, if you have uh, cord cordless tools, they're obviously interchangeable. So if you get them one battery platform, it's a great idea. I have multiple battery platforms because, you know, I just buy tools when I need them. Sometimes it could be near Home Depot or Lowe's and whatever they have kind of cheap on the job. I'll just go buy it. And so you, I'm stuck with a battery platform. So I have a uh, Craftsman, Ryobi, Rigid, Milwaukee, and Makita. And I think I have some DeWalt over there too. But I mainly use uh, Makita as probably my go-to tool. But well, anyway, but also Rigid are good too. Uh, I also have the Rigid sand. It's not a great sand, but I use it for, because I'm lazy. I keep 80 grit in here. The DeWalt or the Craftsman, I'll keep uh, 120 grit, and then I'll go up to my Festool uh, for you know finishing, which we'll talk about the higher end stuff later. So that's so that's what you need. You need something to cut, something to drill or fasten. And honestly, with the drills, it goes back to what I was saying with the um, with the batteries. So if you already have the, if you have a drill, you can also treat this as your impact driver too. So this can also fasten your your screws. Uh, it's not ideal. Uh, eventually you're going to work up to get to get your uh, impact drivers and these come in kits sometimes you get for like 140 bucks or 200 bucks um for example i got the rigid one it's not a great kit it's they're brushed but i got these for i think 140 bucks um it's not bad they came with two, i think two batteries and a charger so you know it's a it's a good deal and that's what you're going to find as you start growing your business is finding tools uh and used tools are fine i don't i don't frown upon it and i have used tools but if you're a real busy shop just think how you use your tools. I mean, sometimes I can go through a drill or an impact driver in a year or two, especially if they're brushed. So just keep that in mind. So that's what you need. Something to drill, cut, fasten, uh, clamp, measure, and really that's about it. So once you get that, that, that basics down, you can start building furniture. Okay, so you have lots of your tools now, uh, your beginner tools, and you're starting to, to build furniture or whatever product you're going to start selling. So you're, you're selling some products, you're making a couple of hours, uh, so now you want to start upgrading your tools because you want to start up, up in your game um, to, to charge a little bit more money possibly and also build better products and also more importantly to speed up your processes because you're going to find um, as you get busy you're going to need to figure out a way to, to speed up your processes and also have backups for tools that break because tools will break constantly especially if you use them heavily the like guy do even if, even if you try to maintain them and you know um, do maintenance on them they, they, they just break over time because you're using them a lot and that's a good thing to a certain extent, but it's also a bad thing because it costs money to replace tools, especially if you're in the middle of a job. Uh, and I have some examples that were. The next, well, let's get into the tools I would get next. So you're starting to sell tool, uh, furniture. You're making some money. You have some profits. I would recommend investing some of these profits back into your business, whether it be into your shop, uh, which I need to do. I haven't, I haven't really done that yet. I mean, I rebuilt it multiple times, cleaned it, but it's too small, so I have to upgrade eventually. And that's something I'm working on as as we speak. Um, I did shop around so keep that in mind so you need to have somewhere to work so whether it be your basement shed garage garage is perfect uh, just make sure you have adequate power or be able to work around the power um, and also space and have your tools kind of handy where they're close by like I'm a mess right now but I but I know where everything is so I could grab I have all my hand tools over here for the most part I have a lot of hand tools um, I have all my clamps over here they're kind of accessible um, I have saws and finishes and things like that up here and I have more stuff over here like hammers and my drill station and things like that so with these tools here you can really start to um, really start to grow your business and I would recommend um, 
the next tools I'd recommend is maybe um, a table saw, if you if you could swing it, and a miter saw to, to start. If you could get either one or both, that that's great. Um, you can get um, a miter saw. I have multiple miter saws. I have this one I keep in, on the the miter saw uh, station here, and I have a little uh, McKee, or I'm sorry, co cobalt one over there that I use for you know on site support, uh, cut and trim and the other stuff. It's it's small and handy. I thought right in the back of my truck. So then I would recommend getting some kind of a table saw. I think a table saw, you can get a job site saw to get the wall skill. I've had both. I still have the skill. Uh, get a job site saw. You get them for like four to six hundred dollars sometimes, sometimes cheaper. Um, and I would use that because um, that will really help you speed up your processes. And also, if you're going to start doing cutting boards and things like that, you kind of need a t uh, table saw to do that. So that's the next I would recommend that sanders get as many sanders as, as you can that are good quality and you're going to upgrade that and then i think the next set of tools i would recommend are routers i would definitely recommend getting a bunch of routers i have a little router table down here i got for 130 dollars like five years ago it still works great i have a couple other routers um loaded everywhere like uh, plunge routers for circle cuts and things like that so i would recommend get some trim routers you get some uh, battery ones i have the rigid and i also have some bosch uh, corded ones and I have Ryobi and a couple other brands too um, but I'd recommend getting some routers I think these are great for you know uh, cleaning up your tabletops uh, also if you want to do mortise tenon joiner you could use a plunge router for that kind of helps you um, and also just softening your wood and also gives a more professional look so I would recommend getting some routers and then the next thing I would honestly get is um, impact drivers I would definitely get some impact drivers because you don't want to constantly use drills um for for everything so i would get an impact driver or a couple if you can but at least get one it definitely helps uh to fasten your your work then i think from there i was the next set of tools i would think i would get obviously if you have your hammers and your basics you know i'm assuming uh get some uh brad nailers i have the 18 gauge air ones with obviously you need air compressor if you do that most people do have air compressor for tires but i have uh the rigid uh and i also have some craftsman um 16 and 18 gauge cordless brad nailers that i usually bring on site with me when i do on site work and i have a couple of like other cheaper brad nailers and pin nailers over here that i use so there are the next things i would recommend getting is getting some routers some brad nailers uh a table saw and a miter saw if and you know and that's this is now i'm talking six seven months in the year or maybe a year or two into your business you're going to start growing hopefully and put that money back into your business Okay, so now your business is growing. Um, you're, you're selling more and more furniture and other goods, and you're starting to make more and more money, hopefully. That's that's the way to go. So let's talk about um, the next things I would recommend getting, and I think a lot of it's going to be due to uh, also helping to speed up your processes, and I would say to maybe up in your game with some of your joinery. Um, and, and I don't mean going out and buying, you know, spending you know, on the mortisers and stuff like that, but I'm saying you can even upgrade your, your pocket hole uh, joinery even. Uh, I have this pocket hole jig. I got, I think, 125 hours or so. This is the um, KPHJ 720. It's made by Craig. Uh, they also have, the, you know, the Foreman. They have more expensive ones. And also, there's other uh, brands that do this. These are pretty good. That help speed up the process. I keep this uh, on the pocket hole station over here with this drill plugged in constantly with the, with the, with the drill bit in it. And I just kind of use that when I need it. Um, and then I would recommend next, um, maybe look at, like, um, a biscuit joiner possibly this isn't great for joinery but you can use it for that smaller stuff but uh this is great for tabletops and also for your your, your table frames for z clips for tabletop fastening and that's more advanced stuff but you can use this it makes i think it's safer than a table saw then another thing you look at is um is like this um this grizzly dowel spindle uh tool i don't really care for it i don't use it really besides for like tabletops um but I more to use the biscuit, but you can use something like this for joinery. It comes with smaller bits, like eight millimeters, so it's kind of worthless in that way. But you can obviously get new bits for it. But it's just like in the spacing on it for me, it's kind of wider than most joints uh, for the tables I build. But you can use it. It's, a, it's definitely an option. It, or you can even go out and buy uh, like a Wood River or another brand uh, Dallin Jake. And these are awesome because these work great if you have. These pointers here. I should have had these there earlier. So these are, work great. These are probably just as fast as most joinery. Well, probably fast as pocket holes even. 
If you have this, you draw your holes in your joinery, then use these little uh, dowel pointers. These things are awesome. These will save you a lot of time, speed up your processes, and I think 40 bucks you can uh, join your tables. And and honestly, when you do joinery like that, it definitely speeds up uh, the process a little bit, but also I think stuff comes out a little more square. Um, I don't know if it's as strong as pocket holes with glue, but um, I, think, I think sometimes pocket holes can kind of take your furniture off center. Uh, if you over tighten or over clamp them so you got to keep that in mind um so i think that is is really the next things i would look at is, is your joinery i mean you can obviously go to you know if you really start making money you could go to like a domino joiner this is kind of like cheating people say but i love it i you know yeah it was 1200 dollars or whatever with you know some of the accessories um you know it comes with sustainers um and i i love festool but that's more something where it took me years to get to that point for you know making profits because i wasn't putting my own money up my business i was using profits from my my uh set sales to build up my furniture because so i really are my tools i really didn't have a lot of tools to start out like i said i had maybe you know circular saws and you drill and you know tape measures that's really about all i had to start with so just keep that in mind so you can start upgrading your tools go higher level um and that's when you know you're going to start making more money hopefully and that's when you establish a business when you start going to like you know fest tools or saw stops and you know grizzlies and other higher end tools another thing i'd recommend maybe is getting like a, a drill press uh, you have your drill but your drill press definitely helps um just drill or pull through so i like to sometimes have something stationary like a drill bit uh drill press and kind of just clamp it down just drill it in i think it's a little safer sometimes than you know drilling in into like you know something's clamped down sometimes you know whatever but you can get a drill press i got that used for i think 100 bucks not even um, and I've had it for years now and it works and it's, it's still fine. So keep that in mind. So I would recommend getting, you know, and also getting more, more clamps because clamps are something that you're going to use more and more, especially, um, if you're doing cutting boards and, um, I, I actually, any joinery, uh, you need tons of clamps. I, I, like I said, I have clamps everywhere. So I keep clamps like kind of like pencils everywhere because I need them all the time and, and try not to keep too, be too messy with the shop but you know which is impossible time so keep that in mind so let's talk about the next tools i would recommend and i would recommend and i probably would recommend this even ahead of time if you're doing especially cutting boards and something that needs to be very clean nice tabletops that a professional look so next i would recommend uh getting a planer if you can um it doesn't have to be at the wall this is the dw735 you can go a different model you go with like a uh, crayson makes some for like 350 dollars uh rigid makes some um Rycon, when there's, and I don't know if Ryobi makes one or not, but I think some of the other brands make them that are a little cheaper, a little more affordable. Um, this one's not too bad though. It's a pretty good planer. It's pretty much a staple on most wood shops. Seems like for smaller wood shops at least. Um, it's a, and I like it. It's not, you know, it's not much better than the Craftsman as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it is better, but I've had issues with, uh, this is my second one. I had issues with the first one, so maybe I have a little. And it's probably my fault. I, I do overuse my tools. I'm very, very busy at times where I use this planer almost every day. So, um, you know, maybe I need to go more industrial. And then the next thing I'd recommend getting is um, a jointer. Now, this is a Ben's Top Jointer. It's 10-inch. It's, it's good. It's not great. I would recommend getting a freestanding one if you could, if you're doing heavy milling, which I am starting to do. Um, but I would I would recommend um, maybe a, a, a more sturdy uh, jointer. Now it, it's good though, and it has like the um, spiral cover head. It's not helical, but it's it's a pretty good product, and I'm not complaining. It, I have for a couple of years now, and it, and it, you know it does okay. Then obviously you can't have enough clamps. You gotta have to have as many clamps you could get. Um, so there are types of things I recommend too. Shop vacs. You want to have shop vacs. I have shop vacs over place here, and I also have dust extractors um, for hooked up to my tools. I used to have a big. Uh, dust collection it just didn't work that well so i end up upgrading and putting a bunch of these little dust extractors in right now um until i figure out something um a better way to, to, to do things but uh that's where i'm at now so you want to have uh, also some kind of protection for your lungs i don't do a great job of it um but i do try to collect as much as i can i probably fill up you know four or five trash industrial trash bags a day um but i still get dust in here everywhere as you can see um but i also have a dust filtration system when you get a little more advanced uh, you want to grab one of these guys. Um, I have I have that. As you see, I have furniture stacked everywhere because it's starting to rain outside. I usually store a lot of my furniture outside, but it's raining, so I'm kind of kind of bringing everything in. So that's what I would get: a planer, jointer, uh, drill press. I need a bandsaw. That's one other thing I am missing, and a drum sander. It's really the main things I'm missing right now 
due to space, uh, but I'm working on it. But these basic tools, you can start making money right away. Okay, so you have pretty much all your basic tools, your medium level tools. You're even starting to upgrade and get maybe a better uh, hybrid table saw or cabinet saw, uh, better um, sanding devices, uh, maybe a fest tool with, with a dust extractor. I have the CT15A uh, hooks up, which is cool because this thing hooks up to all of your Festool tools. Just kind of unplugs, that's your dust uh, hose, and then you have your, your plug. It's all universal. This also plug into my Domino, also into my track saw, which I use a lot. Speaking of that, I would probably recommend, if you could, maybe get a track saw, even before you upgrade your table saw. Because track saw, uh, I've had my table saw go down with me, and I've done a complete total project just with this track saw and a planer for the most part you know besides like sanding and stuff like that but uh, um i pretty much did everything with the track saw straight edges um use it as a jointer use it as my cutter use it as my width you know final width cutter so and ripping everything up with the with the track saw this is a great tool i would definitely recommend that i have a couple of guide rails that came with uh didn't come with it but i had to buy them separately i have the fs 1400 and also have a lr32 i think up up here can't say it's on top of some wood um, so I would recommend maybe upgrading some of your tools as you start to make money. And speaking of making money, let's talk about where I think is a good uh, opportunity and good place to sell your, your your goods. I think one number one is obviously going to be Facebook Marketplace. I'm personal on Facebook. My wife is. She we're kind of a small family business. She kind of does the sales and does you know I guess the marketing we'll call it. She puts it on her um, her Facebook and that's how we get the ball rolling. I also use a, another app called OfferUp. I think OfferUp is a pretty good app. I probably do 25% of my sales off of there at times. Um, it does pretty well. And Craigslist is not a, it, well, it used to be a lot better, but Craigslist is still uh, somewhat relevant. I still make some sales on there. Uh, matter of fact, my first sales were made on, I think it was on Craigslist actually, uh, before I went to Facebook Marketplace with my wife. So I made a couple sales on Craigslist. And Craigslist, you know, you still can put stuff on there. Obviously you have Etsy you could possibly use. Now Etsy's good for like cutting boards and coasters, I think because um you want shipping i mean because most people are going to want to buy things off you're probably going to want it shipped so i think i remember they're going to take uh, a portion of your profits and also shipping you got to pay for that so I, I don't really use it because i mainly build furniture um cutting boards for me i just do it as a gift um so and coasters and stuff like that, i usually do it as a gift with leftover uh, wood from other projects usually i'll just throw like a cutting board in you know it's a nice uh, touch so i think those three places are a good place and also i have a website um, and that could be a, a kind of a, a pretty big expense at times, especially if you want to like, you know, have SEO and go through Google and all that stuff. It could be, you know, it could get up to a thousand dollars a year, you know, depending on kind of what type of website you have and how you want to advertise. So it gets kind of expensive. So if you're not making money, I wouldn't recommend that. But I use my website mainly as a, um, an online portfolio where if people ask questions, I just say, hey, okay, here's my website. If you want to see some color schemes, if we're asking a lot of questions, now be careful with that because the website to me, if somebody hits me up on Facebook Marketplace and they're saying, "Hey, I want, to, I want like three tables, and I want it in this color, but I'm not sure what the color is." So instead of me just sending a link to my website, they think I'm, the, you know, some kind of big corporation or business. Maybe um, I still answer the questions, and then eventually I'll say, "Hey, I have a small uh, website. You know, we're small business." I always emphasize that we're a small business. I think people rather deal with that than go to, you know, um, Walmart or you know or Ashley's or Raymond Flanagan. Not that they're bad. I mean. And I key is they're all great. I mean, I bought stuff from all of them. I'm just saying, like when people are reaching out online on these formats, they're looking for a smaller business. They're looking for something more more custom. So I, I keep that in mind. So I try not to push the website right away because it may scare people away. Believe it or not, um, it may think they may think, well, this is a bigger business than I thought, and I'm going to have to deal with the same supply chains that I'm dealing with with Raymer Flanagan. That's why I'm not going there. And I'm just using them as an example. I'm not bashing anybody because I think they're all awesome companies. Um, and they all have a, have a, have a, a use, so they're they're good idea. So the website is a good online portfolio. I'll, my biggest driver right now is word of mouth and repeat customers, which I think that's where you you're trying to get to. Once you get to that point, then you know you got something going on. Especially if the repeat customers and people are recommending you, uh, then you know you're doing something right. And then that's when you want to really start upgrading your tools and putting money in, investing more and more. Maybe invest in a bigger shop if you're outgrowing like I am. Um, you know, maybe better marketing, maybe even hire somebody, you know, a younger person, uh, which brings me to another point on that. So, I mean, I am I am trying to find people to help 
Uh, and it's hard to find young guys right now that really want to get into this. Because for one, you know, I think a lot of the trades right now are being frowned upon, it seems like. Um, and just working with their hands in general. I think people are convinced they have to go to college, which is fine. I have kids in college. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not against it. But I think we there's a void right now of of young men, especially, that we need to come in and start doing these these types of jobs and building and maintenance um, and designing things. Because right now, the average, I think, blue-collar worker right now might be 50-something years old, which, you know, it's not good because we need people to fix things and build things and, you know, maintain, you know, our standard of living that we're used to, you know, our grades and everything. So just keep that in mind. So if you're a young guy, it's a great time to, or a girl, you know, if you're in the build, building, I think it's a great time to get into this because for one, woodworking is a gateway to other uh, fields as far as I'm concerned. You could get into construction, carpentry, um, more cabinet work, um, more, you know, if you want to get more into paint, you kind of kind of have to learn all that stuff and be pretty good and, or adequate at everything uh, to do this type of work. So you have general knowledge of how to use tools, which it was a good starting point and gateway to other better and bigger things if this isn't your route. You know, if you want to make more money getting into home construction. Well, this isn't the same type of work, but it, it, it's definitely a blueprint and definitely a, a, you know, a base of that. You'll get the base functionality, how to use a, you know, a track saw or a circle saw or clamps, you know, tape measures. So that's that's the basics of that. That's why I bring that up. So just keep that in mind. Uh, this is a great time to, to I think get into business. I think COVID was, you know, showed us that we, the supply chain is is very fragile, and people are waiting for months or years for things. And I was able to turn it around in a week or two. So it definitely my business boomed during that. Um, and keep that in mind. So if you if you're looking to do this, I would just go and start building stuff, taking pictures of it, you know, advertising it, and and see if people start biting it. And once you start building things. And people start buying things then that they start spreading that word especially if they like it that's another thing make sure that you're likable to a certain extent and honest um don't overcharge don't undercharge um tell them what you're going to do keep your word um if you think it's going to take you three weeks maybe say it's going to take me four weeks and then you know you know under you know promise and over deliver whatever they call it so just keep that in mind so okay let's get to the next steps okay so that's pretty much it so um, we got into um, the tools you need, uh, some of the, my opinions, some of my experiences, uh, some recommendations. Uh, I guess my last recommendation is uh, is perceived value gifts and things like that that I mentioned a little bit earlier too. Uh, if you have um, a big order you're doing and you have extra extra lumber left over, um, I would recommend, especially if it's hardwoods. I would recommend maybe building a, a cutting board or coasters or some kind of some other thing like a noodle board or something like that that they can uh that you can give them as a gift you know even though it's a little extra work for you it, it goes a long way uh once you do that and um it's that perceived value and it's also it's a cool factor too because it was used with the same wood that you built their project with so so when i do that for example if i give somebody a cutting board or i do a lot of butcher blocks i always give uh, my own board butter i make out of mineral oil and beeswax and it has all my information on here uh website you know phone number you know company name uh social media and i give that to them it's a, it's a free add-on more perceived value and people seem to really like that and they, i just show them how to apply onto their butcher block where they're cutting boards and also get some business cards if you can i, I think i got 500 of these for like 50 bucks you get uh the, the um the Q uh, code or all that on there too, if you like. Uh, I didn't do that, but you can do that too. Some people do that, make it easier. Um, so get all that stuff and just get everything in line and just start building furniture and or whatever craft you're going to do and just put it out there. Put pictures of it out there. Promote yourself. Uh, don't over promote yourself, but let your kind of work do do the talking for the most part and just put it up there. Be modest and like I said, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Uh, I comment. Uh, I read all the comments if any come in. Or if you know if you, you want to hit me up, DM me, um, or even email me. I can you know I'll, I'll always reply back with, with my experiences, if, especially if you're a younger a woodworker trying to get into the trade, uh, trying to learn some some skill sets. I have zero problem uh, giving all the knowledge I have at least and recommendations. Or if you have any criticisms, let me know too. Just uh, let me know um, if you like it. Subscribe. Um, I don't really. That's not a big deal to me. I, I used uh, YouTube for uh, education and. I think it's a great resource for that and a great platform for education. The, the other stuff on here kind of 
can be a little rough, you know, some of, but I think the woodworking and, you know, just the how-to videos in here and education is top-notch. So, like I said, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Start building.